Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Arcade Crusade. Uh, in today's episode, we are going to continue the restore on the Twilight Zone. Uh, if you have not watched last week's episode, I suggest you go back and do so. Uh, last week we just did a lot of the hardware, we got the legs on, locks on, um, all of that. So I suggest you go back and watch that so you're up to date. In today's episode, uh, first thing we're going to focus on is we're going to replace all of the bulbs in the back box and swap them to LEDs. Um, we'll do a couple custom things back there that I wanted to do. Uh, we're going to replace the shooter rod with a new shooter rod, and then we are going to start working on the gumball popper. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this episode. We'll see how far we get with all of that. Uh, but first things first is we're going to do the back box LEDs. And when you guys change bulbs, um, I always recommend do it with the game off. Don't do it with the game on. You can actually blow an IC chip that's linked to your flippers. Your flippers won't work. Uh, if you happen to ground a bulb out. So what I recommend doing is change bulbs with the game off, just go in with a game plan of where you're putting things and then turn it on and you know, if one of them's off, you gotta adjust it. Okay, it's better than you know blowing that IC if you just gotta go back to a bulb. Uh, so what I usually do first is I just pull all of these 555 bulbs out and I'm just putting them in an empty box that I have right here. So all we're doing is just pulling these out. So, just pulling these out one by one. Right, and actually, if you guys notice, there is black bulb sockets on Twilight Zone. And the black bulb sockets are specifically supposed to be used with a special type of blinking bulb. It's not a flasher. It's a blinking bulb that uses the same base, same wedge base as a 555. Uh, I believe it's called a 545 or either a 455. I can't remember the correct number, but it is a slow blinking uh, 555 style bulb. And the only two games that use them were Twilight Zone and Dirty Harry. Um, and I have a feeling it was used in Dirty Harry because they had parts left from Twilight Zone. I'm guessing they had these black sockets left from Twilight Zone and they had a bunch of these um, blinking bulbs left from Twilight Zone. And it makes sense for Twilight Zone because of the Starfield design and just the, you know, the, the nature of the theme. The blinking bulbs in the back box makes sense. On Dirty Harry, I don't think it really makes much sense. So I think that was more of like a production line issue that they had all of these parts left to use, so they just put them in their next game. And someone double checked me on that. I'm not sure if Dirty Harry was directly the next game after Twilight Zone. Um, it may have been. I know it's the same era around the same year. So there's a chance that's all it is. All right, so we got all of those out. I just put them all in a box for now and let me zoom in just so we get a little bit of a better image all right all right so like i said um the black ones all the black bases are slow blinking uh five five fives basically and comet pinball and coin taker both sell slow blinking 555s now. Um, so all of my LEDs came from Comet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is all the black sockets are gonna get these slow blinking natural white, which is their uh, Comet's natural white is cool white. And what I like to do on these LEDs is, um, the, I like to bend the wire leads to the sides a little bit because most of the time, the way they come, they aren't, really wide enough to make good contact with the socket so every led i like to just bend them a little bit to the side that way when they go into the socket we know we're getting a nice solid connection all right so that is the first one in it's just going to be the same thing um this might suck for you guys to watch because we're just doing the same thing over and over again but for people that haven't LED'd their games before or aren't really familiar with pinball in general, um, this is just basic learning stuff that, you know, everyone has to learn it at some point. All right. 
So mainly I'm going to be doing um, cool white frosted LEDs in most of the back box, but I have a couple spots that I'm going to actually missed a bulb here. Um, I have a couple spots where I want to put in blue LEDs and I have a couple spots that I want to put in color changing LEDs. And I'm going to put the um, Comet Pinball makes a slow changing 555 base um, RGB bulb and it just slowly fades the colors randomly. And I'm going to put those right on these five, maybe this six socket here because um, that's right where the door is at and the door behind Rod Serling is then just going to be changing colors. And I think that looks, I've seen it on a couple games and there used to be a mod years ago before these bulbs existed that people would actually put two LED strips right here and they'd hook them up to their existing game wiring and it would just be basically the same thing but with LED strips. Um, now that these bulbs exist, you don't have to make any modifications to your game. You can just put them in. All right, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six slow blinking 555 LEDs in. Um, and you'll notice the slow blinkers and the color changers don't have domes on them. They don't have clear domes. They don't have um, frosted domes. They're, they're, they're domeless bulbs. So next we have um, blue frosted 555s. And where I'm gonna put these is uh, the first spot we're gonna do is right at the top of the back glass. The Twilight Zone logo is right here, and it has a blue outline to it. So if you put blue LEDs up here, it actually makes the Twilight Zone pop like a lot more than it normally does. So I'm gonna try doing all blue LEDs up here, and then there's a couple other spots that I'm gonna do it based on um, artwork on the back glass. The blue just makes it pop little bit more in two other spots and I'll show you guys those once we get all these in yeah just make sure you check your leads before you put LEDs in um, takes a little bit longer because you got to look at every bulb and it's not something you know before LEDs were a thing it's not something you really had to do when you got a box of five five fives you take them out of the box and just shove them in. Um, these LED ones, it seems like they really just haven't got the manufacturing process down so that these leads are always good to go. And I mean, they're just leads, you know, they get they get bent and stuff. So it's not always gonna be perfect, but I always check mine before I put them in. And if you ever, um, when you, you know, after you replace all these, you go to turn the game on. If one of them doesn't work, it's hardly ever a bad bulb. You usually just need to pull it out of the socket, adjust the leads to make sure they're making contact on both sides, and then put it back in and the bulb will usually come right on. So that's usually the case with stuff like that. It's, it's never really, I mean, sometimes you do get um, DOA bulbs and um, usually if you tell coin taker or comment that you got a bad bulb, they'll send you a new one. They, they don't have an issue doing it. And the same thing, if you get bad rubbers from Titan Rubbers, um, they'll send you a new one. They, they really don't mind um, replacing parts. You know, they, they need to keep their customer base. So, all right, so I'm gonna put a blue LED here. There's a part in the artwork that has some blue in it that'll accent it. And then I'm gonna put one down here, um, down here, right here. There's also, uh, just right over from the bottom left, the next one to the right, there's also some artwork there that looks great with blue. Um, so that's all of our blues. And what I like to do when I order bulbs is I always order, order two or three extra. And like for Playfield, I'll order like 10 extra from what I need. But for stuff like this, you know, blue, slow blinkers, color changing, I always order like two or three extra just to have them on hand. I don't order double, just some extras just in case, you know, one of them ends up going bad or something. So the next one we're going to replace is the, um, we got slow RGB color changers. Again, these are domeless bulbs and I'm going to put, um, I'm going to do right here. It's one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to try one in the sixth one down here. But um, these five, maybe six, are all where the door is at in the back glass. So hopefully these should create a cool sweeping color change effect uh, with the door that Rod Serling's standing in.
And I've actually, um, I've never used these color changers before. Uh, usually I'm, st I stick pretty traditional with LEDs and I just do, um, I just do frosted cool white for almost everything. Um, on my Rocky and Bullwinkle, I did frosted cool white for everything. Inserts, back glass, I did frosted cool white. Um, I obviously did colors to match in certain areas. Like I did some um, frosted reds, some frosted blue, some frosted green. But for the most part, it was frosted cool white. I didn't do any of these color changes or anything. And um, I don't even have non-ghosting bulbs in my Rocky and Bullwinkle, and none of the inserts really ghost. Now, I've heard a lot of people complain about Twilight Zones ghosting. So I went ahead and I got, um, I went ahead and got non-ghosting insert, the, the clear um, domes as well. I didn't go frosted. I went clear non-ghosting bulbs for all of my inserts on Twilight Zone because a lot of people report um, there's a lot of ghosting and, and the inserts light up a little bit better with clear. So we're going to try those for the first time as well. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all the color changers in. These are a little loose in their sockets, so they might need some adjusting. Um, but I got two extras left. And now it's just going to be filling in the remaining sockets with 555 cool white frosted tip bulbs. And we'll just start at the bottom and go around. I mean, I'm taking my time here, but um, back glass, I mean, back, back glass LEDs is like a 10 minute process. It doesn't take long at all. And if you do it tastefully and like accent certain areas of the back glass, you can end up with a really nice looking final product. And I'm hoping these just turn out awesome. Especially the color changers. I've never seen the color changers in person. I've only seen them in videos. So I'm hoping those, hoping those turn out pretty good. Cause I'm usually, um, I usually don't really do a lot of mods to my games. You know, like I'll put on extra artwork and stuff, but uh, in terms of tapping off existing wiring, I don't do a lot of them. And if I did, I would do them with Molex. Can a lot of them come with like alligator clips that you connect, and that's just not a good way to do it. If you're gonna put mods on hook them up with Molex connectors um, or jumpers and just, you know, do it the right way. Don't do, you do alligator clips, you know, someone's shitting you, someone goes to do a death save and they shake your pinball, that alligator clip might slip free. It might short something somewhere in the play field. I mean, it can do damage. So um, don't do alligator clips. Just a lot of them come with alligator clips and I'd recommend just wiring up. I mean, there's tons of uh, threads on pin side about how to cleanly wire mods and I would just follow those I want to say I ordered 25 cool white frosted so I'll have some extras um, there are a few I want to say there's a few in the GI that are 555s, five, five, because um, for the GI, I did all 44, the bayonet base, I did uh, 44 cool white um, frosted. So, but there, I think there's a few spots. It might be, um, you know, like the lamp, the lamp post over the power play field. That might be a wedge base. I think there are a few spots. Um, the pot bumpers, I went with, frosted i didn't color match them i could color match them and go orange yellow and red but um i just went with frosted cool white we'll see how they look and if they if they look better with color matched ones i may order um some orange red and yellow leds to color match the pop bumpers but the pop bumpers take um wedge base frosted as well if you don't do frosted in there um you're really gonna blind yourself This one does not want to go in. All right, so we only got what looks to be four left. 
We'll do this one up here. That that one, that socket's like recessed in there. I might pull the uh, backboard out, take a look, see if we can push that back out. It's not really supposed to sit like that. All right, last bulb. All right, there it is. And like I said, seems like this one, yeah, it is, it's popping out. Um, so you can usually just come behind here and give it a little push and they have these tabs on them, and if as long as you give it a little push, those tabs will push through and then they'll stay on the outside where they need to be. So yeah, now that one's not as bad uh, compared to how it was. So we got all of our color changers in, slow blinkers are in all the black sockets. Make sure all of our bulbs are in, nice and solid. I usually just run through like this. Just make sure they're all making a good connection. All right, that's all of them. We got the game plugged in, so we can just turn it on. So it looks like we got a couple out here. Um, probably just aren't making good connection. Yep, so that one, it just wasn't making a good connection with the um, edge of the leads there. So you just wanna put it back in like so. There we go, good connection there. Got one out down here. And yes, I'm doing this with the game on, but I'm being careful that I put these in the right way. Yeah, I mean, you'll just notice that some of these over time just, um, they just don't make a good connection. It's either the socket is too bent out from people replacing bulbs over the years, or the leads on the LEDs just aren't bent out enough. That one, the LEDs just weren't bent out enough. Same thing with this one. All right, looks like all of our color changers are good. All of our blues are good. And then I just gotta double check these slow blinkers. I think one of them isn't making the best connection. All right, so we just got this one. And again, all I'm doing is just pushing the leads out from the middle. Um, the way that these things are manufactured, they're a little bit skinnier than the old ones. So just push them out so they make a good contact in the socket. And this one's out as well. All right, so all of our Cool whites are good. We're blinking on these four. It looks like this one here isn't blinking and the one up there isn't blinking. So I'm gonna pull this one out and bend the leads out towards the edges and shove it back in. All right, so that, that one's blinking now. Yep. They're all blinking except this top left one. So we will adjust to that one. Hopefully this one isn't a bad socket. I can't really see it from this side. I might have to go to the other side. 
All right, well, it's coming on now, so we know the socket's good. I just got to get it back in the socket. I'm going to walk to the other side so I can actually see. Yeah, one of the leads are, there we go. All right. So that's every single one of them working. Um, let me just go grab the back glass. Of course, I don't have it over here. So I went and grabbed the back glass. I got the key for the back glass lock. Loosen that. And now the back glass will go on. So just find the uh, edges on the lip here. And then it's just going to slide in, turn our lock, and now maybe it'll look better if we lower this down, let's zoom out a little bit. Turn our light off so you can actually see the LEDs, but yeah, we got slow color changers in the door. Um, I think we'll leave the one at the bottom below the door. I gotta see see how that one's changing color. But yeah, definitely doing the blue up by the twilight zone. I mean, look at the accent that it adds around the edge of the twilight zone. It, it looks pretty cool. Um, and then I did a blue down here with the cannon and I blew, a blue up here with the airplane um, kind of by the Bally logo. So that's all cool whites in the back box. And let's take a look with it off again. Just double check everything's working. All right, so there's all of our blues. See, let's see where our color changer's at. So that one is down kind of bottom right. So it's like right here, color changing. So it is it is the edge of the door. So I'm gonna leave the color changer in there. All right, and there it is. Lower the camera a little bit. But that's, I mean, yeah, if I had a color DMD to that, it's gonna look awesome. But that's the color changers. We got our blue around the twilight zone, which I think looks awesome. Blue down here with the books and the cannon, blue up by the airplane. And then everywhere else, we have our cool whites. And then we have our um, blinkers that are slowly blinking. And it just, it adds a really cool effect to it. Those, those blinkers are awesome. And that's how they were originally supposed to be. Yeah, there, there's a cool effect, just the door lighting up behind Rod Serling. All right, so now I'm gonna take the glass off. We'll get the play field lifted up and then we will start working on the shooter rod. Uh, so I'll get the camera set up so we can take a look at that, but we'll go from here. Got the camera set up and I figured before we do the shooter rod, um, while we're here, because this isn't really part of the play field or anything, we'll replace, there's two LEDs inside of the extra ball and the start button and, um, well not LEDs, 555s, and then there is two on the coin door. So while we're here, we'll just replace those in this episode, get those out of the way. Um, so all you gotta do is pull back, there's a plastic tab right here you're gonna pull that back and then rock the switch out and it's just gonna pull just like so and then just try to get this loosened up should just take yeah just a, a slight turn to loosen it up and then actually I don't even know if you need to do that it might just be might be able to stay yeah actually I don't even think you need to loosen that I haven't done this in a while last last time I did this was hurricane um, I believe just this plastic piece just pulls right out if I remember correctly you just kind of rock it out yep there it is so yeah just rock that plastic piece out of there and you can see we got a 555 bulb right here. And um, 
Let me grab, I got a new frosted 555 right here. And we'll put this in. Make sure our leads are spread like so. Put this in and then I'll turn the game on just to make sure this works um, before I put this in and it doesn't work. Take a look at the next one. It shouldn't be flickering like that. Maybe we need a non-ghosting one in there because those are like kind of controlled lights and that's why it's flickering like that. So let me get, let's pull the other one off. Um, make sure this is straight before we tighten it. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Again, you just pry up your plastic, and then once the once it's out of the hole, you can just rock your switch back. Let me turn the game off. Hit the start button, and it starts going crazy. All right, and again. Just rock this back and forth till it pulls out. Be careful with these. You can't break when you pull them out of the assembly. That one came out a lot easier. Um, but yeah, we'll try the same thing with the LED that we had. All right, now we got that one off. What did I do with the original bulb that came out of there? I don't know, I'll find that later. Um, we can do the coin door ones as well. Basically, the way that these work is, it's probably easier to do it with the coin door open, but then you guys can't really see. Um, these black bulb holders just slide right off slide off just like so they just slide back and then they have a bulb in them so slide these back pull them to the side so we can pull these as well so we got all of our old bulbs out and we can just put new ones in now hopefully the coin ones we don't have as much of an issue with the flickering I don't know what that was about. I don't know if it's just that socket or if they need non-ghosting. And if they need non-ghosting, I have extras, so it's not a big deal. Let's put one in here. Spread these leads a little bit better. There. All right, that one's hooked up. Now let's turn the game on. Check these out. All right. So these are all working all right. So we can just slide your black connector back on. It'll go to the edge. Same thing with this one. It'll just push to the edge. And then this can actually go back on the way it was. It just goes right in this hole and snaps in. Yeah, there's little plastic that it snaps into. It takes a good snap. Oh, 
don't now our start button looks nice and bright I'm just gonna put it in um, I'm just gonna put it in the way it is and we'll see maybe when we start a game and it actually triggers the extra ball if it actually lights up brighter it may just not I think I have a feeling it just doesn't light up in a track mode and that's why we're not seeing it and if we actually go to the all lamp test it'll light up the correct way um, yeah so same thing our switch the big switch holder was on the left side on both of them um, but this is just gonna go um, like so I'm gonna turn the game off because I gotta hook these switches back up but there you heard heard the snap right there on both sides and that's clicked in it's a little bit harder to do it on this side Let's see if we can get a good snap I may have already gotten it there we go yeah you want to hear that snap to make sure those are actually in and while we got the switch off I'm just gonna tighten up both of these Yeah, you don't actually need to remove these. Um, I thought you did, but then I remembered it's just a pl plastic piece that slides out. So you don't even have to mess with these on your game, but it's fine. The start one was loose anyway. All right, so now start is nice and tight. It's straight, and we just got to make sure the extra, buy extra ball one stays straight when we put it on. Yep, it's straight. All right, we're nice and tight there. We got both of our coin ones put on and now it's just hooking the switch back up. Um, again, there's two holes here, top hole and a bottom hole, um, basically switch goes like this and then it rocks down in you pull this plastic back and it locks in and that's it that's us hitting the switch uh, make sure you didn't screw up any wires when you did it and then it's going to rock the exact same way on this side so put it vertically and then bend it down into place you'll hear the snap because it went in the hole and there's both of them, no wires broken or anything. And we got LEDs here and on our start and extra ball buttons. So those are done. And now we will rebuild the shooter rod. All right, so I have brand new shooter rod parts. I got a new shooter rod. My brown spring from Marco's just came. I got a new E-clip, new washer, new shooter sleeve. Um, this thing really needs to get cleaned up, but I'll do that after I swap it out. I'll just grab some simple green and wipe this down. But uh, the way that this comes off, I usually use either a flathead screwdriver to pry up the E-clip or a needle nose. But first, pull your shooter tip off. Just kind of wiggle it off. I'm not saving this. I have a brand new shooter tip. So... Um, usually be careful with them. I mean, I didn't even rip that taking it off, but that this one's getting thrown out because we're putting a new one on. So then go ahead and pull this E-clip off. You're just going to want to put your spring back and then just make sure we're pulling from the right spot. I take a needle nose. And I just pull this out and there we're almost out and that's pulled off and that's a weird e-clip it's like a it's more of like a c-clip than it is an e-clip that's weird uh, but anyway then your spring comes off 
E-clip off. Um, I recommend when you rebuild this, just order all new parts. Um, E-clips are cheap, springs are cheap. Just do it the right way. But your shooter sleeve and your E, uh, you got a metal washer, then your shooter sleeve. And then on the other side, you have a metal washer and then a spring. So it's pretty easy how this goes together. And our new one's just gonna go together the exact same way. All right, got all the parts out of their bags. This is gonna go together same way we took it apart. So we got our new shooter rod. I went with translucent blue. I'm grabbing it right now and I'll bring it over. Uh, I went with translucent blue. I think it's gonna look really sharp on this game. But first thing, we're gonna slide our spring washer on. That's gonna go on the outside. And then we are going to slide on our metal washer. So then those two are on and we slide in. So you got brand new spring washer, brand new metal washer right there. And then next is going to be the shooter sleeve. I have a brand new one then another metal washer after the shooter sleeve, and then the spring and the E-clip. So shooter sleeve is gonna go on the shooter and then in all the way uh, with the flange part towards the inside of the cabinet. And then we have another metal washer that goes right after the shooter sleeve. And then we have our brand new spring and our brand new E-clip, and that is it. Um, this all goes together just like that. And then we, the last thing we gotta do is put on the new shooter tip. So what I like to do is just push against it with my hip and then pull the spring back. And then our new E-clip is just gonna push right on. Here, two clicks of it clicking in and it's fully on. And that's our new shooter, brand new spring, brand new rod, um, brand new sleeve and it's a nice blue shooter. Looks pretty, looks pretty cool. It matches the game pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. The new shooter tip is right on top of my box of parts, so I got it out. We'll just do it on camera, but um, I got a light blue one from Titan Rubbers. Like I said, you're just gonna put it on all the way and then just kind of twist it till it's fully on and in place. But um, that baby blue, it's going to look just like the baby blue twilight zone that's right on the center of the apron. Um, it's going to look awesome. It's going to match it really well. But there it is, brand new. Um, you know, this was like, the rod was like seven bucks, but all the parts to change everything out is like, I don't know, three, four dollars, including the shooter tip. So if you don't even, if you don't need a new rod, it's even cheaper, but you might as well replace all this stuff. It takes, you know five minutes and you won't have to do it ever again so all right that's it for the shooter rod we'll get set up for the gumball popper all right so we're gonna get started on the gumball popper here uh, first things first i have my soldering iron hooked up to the service outlet in the game i have the game turned off uh, right now my soldering iron is heating up i got it set to 750 it's almost at 750 right now all right, so now that we're at 750, um, basically all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna heat these wires up and see if I can pull them off. We might have to add new solder just so um, these actually melt. Because this solder looks like it's not wanting to melt. There we go. That's one unhooked. And there we go, both of them unhooked. Uh, just make note of which side each one was on. I took a picture of this beforehand, but um, if you wanna get it to come off a little bit easier, the best way to do so is to um, add some new solder to it. Then you'll have a nice, clean, new solder joint and then it'll melt right away, but that's fine. That got the job done. All right, so now the next thing is, 
Um, we are gonna wanna unhook the wires hooked up to the opto sensor here because actually to get this one off, since it's a ball popper, you gotta unscrew the plastic piece. So I'm just gonna unhook these wires. Um, yeah. Just notice each color goes to each color. There's only one orange wire, so when we hook it up back together, it's gonna be the same thing. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna feed this back through. Unhooked there, I have a uh, quarter inch nut driver right here. So I'm just gonna come in with this. Let me put these wires out of the way. Come in with my quarter inch nut driver and I'm going to undo the entire bracket for this thing and we are fully disconnected. All right, so let me zoom out for you guys. That's zooming in. So that is the entire ball popper assembly. Um, solder joints on the optos look clean, so we won't have to touch those up, but uh, we got two optos here that tell you if the ball is in the joint or not. So I'm just gonna wipe those clean. Um, and then the ball popper itself, to get off the plastic piece, um, I'm using a number two Phillips head. So we'll take that off. I'm gonna have to hold the... Uh... All right dropped in the bottom of the cabinet. I got it right here. Okay, so that takes the ball popper piece off of the coil. And now to actually get the coil apart, we gotta take off these two screws right here that actually hold the coil on. So same thing, I'm using a number two Phillips head. to show you before we take it off. Basically, coil mounts like so. It goes through that bracket to hold it in. The other side is actually part of the bracket that mounts to the play field. Uh, so once we take this off, the coil will be completely free for us to take off. So you can just tilt it to the side, pull it out, and now this bracket we can just put to the side for now because we want to see how this comes apart. So, well, this one's actually missing the coil sleeve, so that's part of our problem. And it looks like the winding broke. Um, this coil's not in good shape. I mean, it's missing the wrapping as well. So, um, it's gonna go just like so. We got our new coil. We just gotta figure out the sleeve situation because I got a brand new spring for it and a brand new sleeve for it. And I don't know if it's supposed to use a flange sleeve or if it's supposed to use a different style sleeve. The one it came with is not flanged. It's like almost like your flipper sleeve. And that came in the coil. So maybe that is the right one. if it would really make sense for it to go that way. Let's see what the flanged one looks like. The flanged one is supposed to be the correct one. It's a two, six, two and one sixteenths flange. And I believe it goes just like that. I'm gonna try this one. And I have a brand new spring for it as well. So I'm gonna compare this spring to the original spring that's on here. Basically, I'm just gonna slide the bad solenoid out of here and slide the new good one in. I'm 
I'm gonna try the new spring. It looks about the same as the old one. The old one looks a little bit more wound though. So I'm just gonna... All right, we'll put the new spring on. So we got the new flanged coil sleeve and we got a brand new spring on the end of that. So now um, that is the entire coil assembly right there. So this can actually get hooked back up to this as it is and then we just use our existing screws that we pulled out put these back on I'm just gonna get them hand tight and started There's one hand tight, put the other one on. And there's a second one. So bracket goes on the same way. Um, before we tighten everything up, we'll put the plastic cap back on. So same way it came off. Same screw. Just hold the coil while you turn it. But yeah, that's it. It's fully tightened. All right, so now we just got to tighten the bracket. We got nice smooth, you want to check, but I mean, we have nice smooth movement here. We got a new spring, new coil um, sleeve, new coil, um, existing poppers on there, but make sure all of our screws are tight. We're all tight there. So now it's just gonna get mounted the same way that it was on the play field. And then that is pretty much all we have to worry about, so. Make sure your opto wires are out of the way and everything. Black is hooked up correctly. Okay, so our optos are hooked up the right way now. Our optos are good. We got them wired up. We're all tight on there. So now it's just messing with this. We're just going to run these wires through the holes in the solenoid. All right, here's my solder. Just let that solidify. It's taking a while. Let's just let that solidify. Make sure we got a good, strong connection. That's solid. We'll add a little bit more solder to it just to make sure, but that is a pretty solid connection.
All right, that's nice and solid. I'm confident with that one. All right, I'm gonna feed this through. All right, so we'll get the one on, feed it through the back, and I'm just going to add solder to this and then put the second one on. Yeah, it's kind of a pain when you have to solder a solenoid with two wires on it. Um, the best way to do it was through the back and then one on top and just slowly add solder to it so you don't lose the wire itself. But we got a strong connection now. We can turn the game on, see if we have any issues. All right, game booted up. Let me pull the play field down. All right, let's go into test mode and go into test. We'll do a solenoid test and then gumball popper. Our, our gumball popper is working, so. Gumball popper is working. We don't need to replace the transistors on the board. So let's fully lower the play field now. I'm just gonna throw this up there. All right, so we got load gumball. And then I'm gonna throw it down the right lane. Gumball's loaded, it pops the ball over. Kicks a new ball out. And we're good, gumball machine works now. Uh, so I don't have three, I only have one gumball in the gumball machine right now. The game doesn't know any better, um, so it doesn't matter, but, so it's got three in the trough. And we will start the test now. All right, sees one in the out hole. It'll shoot one out into the auto fire, down into the gumball popper. Shoots it over. Shoot one out again. Test is working. Let's check our popper. Yeah, our popper. Um. All right, yeah, we'll load one in. Is there two there or three there? There we go. 
All right, so we got one loaded back in the um. The main reason I did that was to check uh, that the optos were working for the popper itself, and they are. Um, so we got it completely hooked up and working now. So um, the only thing that's actually wrong with this game right now is that left flipper coil stop. If we were to fix that, we could play a full game. Um, but yeah, that's it. So uh, in this episode, we finished out the... Uh, we did all the LEDs in the back box. We fixed the gumball popper. Um, got the new shooter rod on. I mean, that was, that was pretty much everything I wanted to accomplish. Um, yeah, so next time, hopefully we'll just focus on rebuilding the flippers. We'll get all four flippers rebuilt. And then, um, then we're almost at the point where we can just clean and do rubbers and LEDs and we're almost done. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thanks for watching this week's episode. Uh, we'll come back to this next week, but you know, it's actually flying by, you know, we should get this Twilight Zone done pretty soon. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. See you guys soon.